Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Now, all of us hate maintenance on our tanks. It's probably the least favorite thing that we like to do, but it's probably the most essential thing that we have to do to keep our tanks in pristine shape like the one you see here. Now, if I were to tell you that there were five fish and invertebrates that can help you cut that maintenance in half, that's pretty exciting really. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the top five uh, fish invertebrates that I think are very unique to helping to keep your tank in top shape. So I hope that you'll join me and come back in a few minutes here and we'll talk about these top five. We'll count them down from five to one, which ones I think are the most important. And uh, anyways, hang in there with me and we'll be right back. Although Seachem is not an official sponsor of this channel, I do hope that you'll go out and try some of their amazing products today. So number five on my list of uh, invertebrates or fish that are uh, good at helping to maintain or clean your tank is the Neurite snail. And as you can see, um, this uh, snail here is uh, sort of a uh, pumpkin color with some black spots on them. Um, they come in a variety of colors. There's no end to uh, the colors that these, uh, these snails can present. Um, each one is very unique in its own way. These guys are amazing at just going around and cleaning up any kind of algae that might be in your tank. Now, uh, one of the things that you need to know about these guys is uh, I did a video not that long ago on the longevity of these snails in particular and uh, they do not do well in fresh water per se. Uh, they, they do tend to like a brackish water better and uh, you really kind of hit and miss with these guys as to how well they're going to do. Uh, the more established your tank is, the better chance you have of keeping these guys alive. If you have an immature tank, you're probably not gonna do too well with these guys, but they're great little cleaners. Uh, they'll typically run across your glass. See if I can go around to this side here, and I think there is one on the glass here. Yeah, as you can see, they go along the glass here, and they basically are uh, constantly moving along that glass, cleaning up any kind of slime that might be on there. Uh, any kind of rock surfaces. Now, I think there's three in this particular tank. I see two here, but these lights have just come on here, so they could be anywhere in the tank. But as you can see, uh, this guy here is basically going along this rock and uh, really just sort of cleaning it up and uh, leaving it uh, pretty clean as he goes across there. So. Uh, the Neurite Snail would be number five on my list of my top five. And uh, again, you got to be careful because I don't guarantee that these are going to do real well in your tank. Uh, I have had them do well in this particular tank. I've had these about a year and a half. And I've had other ones where I've put them in the tank in a very mature tank because I, I know better than to put them in an immature tank and um, they have not done well. They've only lasted a few months or six months and all of a sudden they just die off and there's no reason for it. Anyways, number five on our list, the Neurite Snail. Uh, there is an alternative to this snail and that would be the Mystery Snail if you can get those. Uh, they're really great snails as well for keeping down any kind of algae in your tank. As you can see, I really don't have algae issues. There's a little bit of green on these rocks, but that grows and within a day or two between uh, the snails and the other cleaner um, fish that we have in this tank, that stuff pretty much doesn't last very long. So anyways, let's go on to number four here. Here is the Corydora. Now Corydoras are 
uh, not really particularly algae eaters. They will eat algae tabs with protein in them, but they're not really known to be algae eaters. They're more of a scavenger fish, and the reason why I put them on uh, this list is because they're just fantastic at going around and scavenging your tank and uh, keeping things clean and tidy. Now, what they will typically do, let me go around to this side here, as we've got everybody kind of crowding up over here. Uh, they will go around and use those barbells to sort of move substrate out of the way and pick at any food that might have gotten away from the other fish and landed on the bottom of the tank. And that's the reason why I think these are such great cleaner fish uh, or maintenance fish, I should say, because they do such a fantastic job of just going around and making sure that every morsel of food that might be in and around these little crevices and uh, areas of substrate. Uh, they do just an amazing job of keeping those areas clean. And they're just constantly, constantly working um, these different areas of the tank. And they're doing such a good job. Now these guys come in a variety of colors. These guys that I have in here right now, the albino quarry, Dora are simply in here because I love the contrast of these albino quarries against this dark substrate. It's just such a pretty look. And uh, now there is a panda quarry that's kind of an orphan that I have in this tank as well. But as I said, the lights have just come on in this tank in the last 15 or 20 minutes. So not everybody's real active yet. And, uh, but they, they do have a variety. I mean, there's, uh, at least 30 varieties that I know of, of quarries that uh, are fantastic for your tank. There's the Julie quarry, which I have in another tank over here. Uh, there's Jade quarries, which I also have in another tank in this room. And then of course the Panda quarry, the Survey quarry, um, the uh, al uh, albino quarry that you're seeing here. Now I keep these guys in a group of, uh, this is a 20 gallon, and I try to keep at least five to seven of these in a 20 gallon simply because they do like to uh, be in a group. They do not like to be alone. Uh, they don't do well when they're alone. So try to keep these guys in a group of five to seven and uh, make sure that you're uh, getting these guys some, uh, some substitu substitution food if they need it because not always do they get a chance to get enough food at the bottom. So I like to throw algae tabs at the bottom with a little bit of protein in it. Uh, there's a good tab that I buy that has uh, algae and protein both in it, and they really do well um, with that. So um, again, keep these guys in a group of five to seven in a, like a 20 gallon tank. And uh, like I said, they will be constantly working the soil and you see those barbells on the front of their mouth there you see how they're working them around in that sand you want to be careful with the substrate that you use with these guys because if you use anything that has like uh, let's say uh, lava rock or uh, coarse stones of any kind it'll wear those barbells down and then they're really in trouble they get they get to the point where they can't find food or they can't eat correctly I've had that happen before and I don't make that mistake. This particular substrate here is fluval stratum. It is not rough by any means. It's really just hard, kind of lumpy soil and uh, it's fine for their barbells. It does not create any problems whatsoever. So anyways, uh, number four on our list is the Corydora. And uh, like I said, tons of varieties of these fish out there. Uh, they're, they're almost kind of like a designer fish for your tank. You can find pretty much anything you want as far as color. I just happen to like these albinos against this dark uh, substrate and the red lava rock and of course the, the beautiful greenery that's in this tank as well. Anyways, number four on our list, the Corydora. Let's go on to number three. So the next fish that I think is a must for your tank is the Siamese algae eater. This is number three on my list because it is an absolutely uh, amazing fish at going around and constantly uh, working uh, all the leaves in your tank and making sure that no algae even gets started. Uh, now one of the things you need to know about this particular fish is you can be tricked into buying the wrong uh, 
uh, kind of uh, fish and thinking that you're getting a Siamese algae eater when you're really not. Now, what you want to look for, and he has gone off and uh, hidden on me here, but I wanted to show you really quickly what you might want to look for. There he is right there. Now, you see right here that long, dark stripe along his side. That is from eyeball to tail. Now, the flying fox, which looks a lot like this fish, is uh, often sold as a Siamese algae eater, and it is not. And the reason why uh, it's not because it doesn't do the same job in your tank. It's, uh, it's not particularly a great algae eater. And uh, the other difference in the Siamese algae eater and the flying foxes is the flying fox is going to have four barbells, two in the front and uh, two in the back. And uh, what you're gonna find is with the Siamese algae eater is that they just simply have two in the front, much like the Corydora does. And uh, you want to sort of look for that when you're buying these fish because it's important that you get the right one. Now there is also the Chinese algae eater. The Chinese algae eater does not look anything like that, uh, like this uh, at all. And in fact, uh, you want to be careful because when you say Siamese algae eater, some may, may say, oh, I've got Chinese algae eaters. Those are not fish that you want in their tank. Um, they are extremely aggressive. They're uh, not particularly good at uh, taking care of algae. And they're more of a nuisance fish than anything. In fact, they can get so big that they can really uh, dominate a tank very quickly. So you've got to be careful with that. Now, the Siamese algae eater, I would tell you, uh, I would keep them in a group of three in a 20 gallon. Now rotate them out because they're going to get big. As they get bigger, uh, rotate them either to a bigger tank or, um, you know, get rid of them. Put them, uh, you know, back to a store that'll take them and uh, buy some smaller ones and just keep rotating them out if you don't have a larger tank to put them in. And that often is a problem uh, with these fish is as they get bigger, um, it gets uh, to the point where they're uh, not very aggressive necessarily, but they can be a very dominant fish in a tank if you're not careful and uh, cause a lot of um, disruption in that tank. So as I said, if you can keep them small, buy them small as they get bigger, take them back to the store and uh, you know see if they can get you some smaller ones you're always better off. Now, they'll last six to eight months in the smaller size, and then as they start to get bigger, depending on what your feeding is in your tank and how much algae you might have. Now, I don't have algae issues, so, you know, these guys uh, don't grow real fast, and they obviously keep my tank in pristine shape, but um, I do recommend that if you are, uh, you know, getting these fish, be careful that you do rotate them out, as I said, and make sure that you are getting the correct fish. Now, this guy, as I said, has distinct markings. That line from eyeball to tail is very, very telling as to whether or not it's a true Siamese algae eater. The flying fox looks a lot like this fish and uh, will be sometimes sold as a Siamese algae eater when it's not. And uh, if you're not you know, aware of this or you're new to the hobby, uh, you can get tricked really quickly into buying the wrong fish. Anyways, number three on our list is a Siamese algae eater. And let's go down here and talk about number uh, two. Number two fish is sometimes hard to find in your tank here, but it is the Pleco or Placosimus. And these guys are fantastic algae eaters. They are continuously working leaves and riding up and down the leaves and sucking on them. Uh, they can do damage to leaves if you're not careful, if you get uh, these guys getting too big in your tank. So you want to try to keep them small. Again, uh, rotating them out of your tank into a larger tank as they get bigger. Now, the best of the Placosimus or Pleco to get, this is an albino bristle nose here. 
I just like their color. That's why I get them. There is a natural brown uh, version of this as well. And uh, they do equally as well at keeping algae uh, at bay in your tank. But again, I would be extremely, um, uh, you know, diligent about, uh, you know, how big these guys get. Because once they get a certain size, they become very destructive at uprooting uh, different things in your tank and you just have to be extremely careful about that. So uh, make sure that you do, again, like I said, rotate them in and out, but they're fantastic at going along the leaves. And as you can see, I'm trying to find a leaf that uh, they've made suction marks on, and I don't see any here, but uh, typically I'll cut those out if they get looking too bad. But uh, these guys can suck on leaves pretty, pretty hard and make a mark on them and the leaf really doesn't ever heal from it it just leaves that permanent spot on there anyways number uh, two on our list is the pleco or placosimus and again a fantastic um, fish that keeps algae off leaves and plants of all kinds rocks I mean wood uh, this is where you know their natural habitat would be wood is where you would find these guys in the wild uh, latched onto a piece of wood and um, any wood that you have in your tank they're going to work it and they're going to really really keep everything in tip-top shape so uh, keeping these guys as part of your cleanup crew or maintenance crew is really really important we're going to go down to our number one fish now and it's probably a fish that all of you know and we're going to go to that right well, the now. The number one fish on my list of cleaner fish or maintenance fish are the auto sinklets and that's these little guys right here that you're seeing on this little leaf here and this little piece of wood. These guys are the absolute best at cleaning up your tank. Um, there is nothing better out there. They're just little algae eating machines and uh, they're just the best at it and they're continuously doing this night and day uh, they will rest during the day or in the evening but they will wander your tank uh, day and night uh, keeping things really tidy as you can see this tank has no algae issues whatsoever in here the leaves and the rocks have a little bit of algae on this particular rock down here, but I leave that simply because I like the look of it. And uh, these guys though, if you're, if you're worried about brown algae and that sort of thing, this is a fish that I would introduce into your tank early uh, after your cycle. And uh, I would introduce them in a group. I would not put anything less than five to seven of these guys into your tank, a 20 gallon. Uh, as you get up into a 40 or 50 gallon, I'd put 10. Uh, they just like to pal around together and uh, they just do a lot better when they have more than one. Now, when you're buying these fish, there's some things to look out for and be careful about, and that is their bellies. I don't have a way of showing you that right now. If there was one on the glass, I would show you the belly, but I, I don't see any on the glass right now. There's probably five of these in here, uh, but what you want to look for when you're uh, buying these is to make sure they have a nice round belly. If they look like they're sunk in at all, don't buy them. Move on to someplace else to look for these fish uh, or wait until they get a better batch in. If they're emaciated like that, they're not going to do well. Typically, let me say that again, typically, they are not going to survive uh, having, uh, you know, their bellies shrunk in like that. They're just not going to survive it, and they're going to have uh, a hard time coming back from that. So uh, make sure that their tummies are well-rounded. That means that they're well-fed and they're well-nourished and they're healthy. If they're not, they're not going to last long in your tank and that's just a fact and you've got to be extremely careful about that uh, if you can get them healthy and you can keep them with a supply of algae in your tank and uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're um, 
you know, resourcing them just for the algae that are on your leaves and your rocks and uh, wood and so forth. Uh, you may have to supplement them with some algae tabs that you put in the bottom of the tank in the evening. I don't recommend doing that during the day because the rest of your fish will try to pick at it and these guys will be a little bit timid and won't come around for it. So uh, what I would recommend is putting it in in the evenings if you're going to put algae tabs in here and then these guys will take advantage of that in the evening while the other fish are resting and they'll uh, they'll stay nice and full. Uh, that's just a little trick that you can do. But number one on our list of cleaner fish and fish that uh, help maintain your tank is the auto sinkless. And again, these guys, be careful when you buy them that they're healthy, but get a group of five to seven of them if you got a 20 gallon tank. Uh, they really are fantastic at keeping your tank algae free. And like I said, they work day and night at it. They're constantly, um, you know, forging around and uh, working on leaves and uh, pieces of wood and rock and so forth. And uh, as you can see, like what they're doing right now, I mean, they're just constantly moving around and keeping those um, parts of your tank that uh, have any kind of algae that might be starting up, they're getting it fast and they're gonna get rid of it for you and it never even gets a chance to start. Anyways, number one on our list, the Auto Sinkless. And uh, I'll be back in just a minute to summarize this video and we'll talk a little bit about uh, why I think these guys are great to have all of them, all of the number five fish and invertebrates that I have on this list. Um, all of these guys should be in your tank and I'm going to talk to you about that when we come back. So giving you all the information that I have regarding these five fish and invertebrates that I think are just amazing uh, cleanup crews and uh, uh, maintenance crews for your uh, tanks is really important that we do understand that there are some guidelines on doing this and uh, the first thing I want to say because I don't want to make this video really long is the nearite snail uh, some people have success with them and some people don't but you got to do all the right things you have to do tons of water changes and maintenances in order for these snails to survive and they do have to have a food source if you um, are providing them, for example, with a, uh, an algae tab uh, and you're doing this all the time and there's no incentive for that snail to go around the tank and look for food when they know that they're just going to get it. Now, I'm not saying their brains are big enough to understand that, but the laws of nature would tell you that if you're getting a food source and uh, you look for it, hard enough you don't have to go around the tank and, and, and look for it and, and actually feed off from the things that you would in nature. The second thing I want to talk about is the auto sink list and how important it is that when you put these fish in a tank that you put them in a group. Um, now for example a 10 gallon tank I really think that that's just too small to Put many of these things in there and again they don't do well and uh, less they're in you know five six seven uh, there's a lot of people say six is a minimum uh, I think that in a five gallon tank you can put five of them they're very small fish uh, they're not going to make much of an impact on your tank look at their bellies make sure that they're nice and round if they're emaciated looking and uh, they don't look healthy don't purchase them there you know go somewhere else and look for them because once they're to that state, as I said, they are not going to come back very readily. So get healthy fish to start with, and this gives you an opportunity to get started at a, um, uh, a good point. Now, all of this um, cleaning of your tank and keeping the maintenance uh, uh, as good as you can in your tank, cutting it in half by letting the fish and invertebrates do the job for you really has to do with having a complete cycle in your tank. This doesn't mean you go down to the store, buy a fish tank, throw some water in it, some gravel and a filter and then start throwing fish in there the next day. 
uh, I see so much of this. I was at a fish store yesterday. I was talking to a guy. I said, how long has your tank been running? Because I had overheard him talking about getting some fish. Oh, yeah, I've had it going for two days, so I'm, I'm pretty confident. I said, two days? And he had no plants. He had gravel, and he expects that he's not going to have any problems with these fish. It's just insanity. But the people at these big box stores, PetSmart, uh, Petco, all of these places are, you know, these people are minimum wage people. They're very uneducated in this. Half of them are students or uh, low income people that are just looking for any kind of a job. Um, they throw them into this with very little education whatsoever. And then they're out telling people how to do this. Um, I, I don't go to these stores unless I absolutely have to have something that I can't find anywhere else. And uh, you know, it's just the way it is. But the bottom line is to close this video out, these five uh, fish and invertebrates are absolutely fantastic for your tank. And I think you need all five of them. And if I would add a sixth one in there, if you can get some mono shrimp, or some red cherry shrimp or whatever, and they're not gonna get eaten by the fish that are in your tank. That's another great source. Um, I, I don't use shrimp. Um, I've had a couple of shrimp tanks over the years. They're not that exciting to me. Shrimp are pretty to look at and whatever, but you know, there's really, uh, there's only so much you can do to look at shrimp all day long and whatever. Uh, but if you wanna add them to your tank as a uh, tool, to clean your tank up, then that's that's a whole different thing. Anyways, thank you for joining me. Hit that comment line down there. If you have any questions or you wanna make a comment about some of the things that I've mentioned or some of the fish that I've mentioned here in invertebrates, um, you know, leave me a message down there and I'll get back to you. And uh, if you've had experiences with any of these fish uh, and invertebrates uh, and, and what they've done for your tank to help you, leave that in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends. Anyways, that's it for now. George here with The Art of Water. We will see you on the next one. Until then, we're out of here.